Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to design a pop-out social media follow button bar on your page template in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the very first thing we need to do is to head over to our theme builder. So I'm going to come over here, hover over Divi, and then click on theme builder. Next, we're going to create our template. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. Now, this in this tutorial, we can use any page we want. We can use a landing page. We can use our home page. We can use any specific pages here. So to make things easier for me, I'm just going to go and add this on our home page and then create template. Okay, so now we have our template here. We need to start building it by clicking over here to add custom body, build custom body. Next, we're going to build this from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and choose build from scratch. Now for this, we're going to need a single column. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. And then we're going to add our social media follow. So I'm just going to search here and select it. So by default, we have these two icons, so we can add a few more just to make it look more busy. So I'm just going to duplicate this a few times, and then I'm just going to go in and change these one by one by clicking on this gear icon. So I'm going to click here and change this from Twitter to YouTube. Then I'm going to go back, change this from Twitter to LinkedIn. And then finally, I'm going to change the last one to Instagram because Instagram is quite popular. There we go. But of course, if you don't want any of these, you can just go in and uh, delete it. It doesn't really matter. All right. So now that I have all these set, the next step now is to add our links to our, shows, our social media icons. And to add our links, all you have to do is to click here on this gear icon, click on link, and then you add your link like that. For this example, I'm just going to add a blank link. But in your case, you need to add your links that will take the, the visitor to the actual pages, okay? So let's assume we've added all your links there and everything looks good. Now we need to add a button module. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that by first of all, starting by saving here. And then I'm gonna click here on this plus button and search for my button and select it. So here we're gonna just type in follow. And of course, we're going to need to add our link in here. So I'm just going to add a blank link as well. Now let's stylize this button and uh, make it look slightly different. So the first thing we're going to do is to come over here to design and we're going to start here with our button. So I'm going to click here on activate use, use custom styles for button. Right. So the very first thing we're going to do here is to add our button size. So we're going to set this to 16. Next, we're going to come over here to our button text color. So I'm just going to add a gray color here, but you can add your colors that match your branding. Okay, so next I'm going to come over here. Now we don't need a background color for this one here. So let's go ahead and remove the border. And then we're going to continue on and change our button font. And the font we're going to use here is Monster Ads. And here it is. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And we're also going to set this to bold just to make it stand out a little bit. Now we also need an icon for this. So I'm going to use this icon right here. So I'm going to select it and then we're going to continue on and we also need to add our margins here. So I'm going to click here on spacing and I'm going to add my margin left and set it to 100%. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is to come over here to our bottom padding and we're going to set this to 100 pixels. And then we need to add our positioning here. So we're going to come over here to advanced position and we're going to set this to absolute and of course we can choose where we want this to be so we are going to come back to this and decide where we're going to set our absolute positioning okay so the next thing we need to do now is to go into the row settings all right so the next thing we need to do is to go over here to our row settings so i'm going to click here on this gear icon we're going to set our background color to white so i'm just going to go in here and just drag my color picker here to white then I'm going to come over here to design sizing and set my gutter width to one and my width here. I'm going to set it to hundred percent. And then my maximum width is going to be 64 pixels, right? So the next stage now is to add our padding. So I'm going to come all the way down here to spacing and for our top padding, we're going to set this to 24 and then for our bottom, it's going to be 16. And then for the left it's going to be 16 as well. Now let's add our box shadow. So I'm going to come over here, click on this first uh, option for our box shadow. And then I'm going to go to our blur strength and I'm going to set this to zero. 
In fact, I need to set it to 30. Now over here on the color, on the shadow color, I'm gonna set this to transparent, but on the hover state, I'm gonna set this to a specific color here. So I'm gonna click here and uh, I'm just gonna slide this so I can get my values here. So the value I'm gonna add is going to be between the brackets. So I'm gonna go in and paste it like that. So this is what's gonna happen on hover. There we go. And then that's the hover state. All right, great. So now that I've added my colors here, the next step now is to add my CSS code to our main element. Now, if you want to use the exact same CSS code that I'm going to be using here, I'm going to leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so let's go ahead and add our CSS. I'm going to click here on advanced, and then I'm going to come over here to custom CSS, and on the main element, I'm going to paste my CSS code. Now, as you can see here, I need to drag this above so I'm just going to save this. In fact, you know what? Before we continue, let's go ahead and add our margins on both on the hover and also on the normal state. So what I'm going to do now is go back over here to my design and then we're going to go to our margin by clicking here over on spacing. And on the margin left here, I'm going to set this to minus 64. Okay, and then... I am going to click here on this arrow pointing up because that's my that's my hover state. And on the hover, I need to set this to zero. So this is going to show, it's going to disappear and then it's going to show when you hover on it, okay? Right, so next, I'm just going to save this. All right, so the next step we're going to do now is to add our content, our content area. So to do that, I'm just going to go back and click here on uh, wireframe mode. And then I'm just gonna add my post content in here. So I'm gonna select my post content and then go into my settings. So the very first thing I need to do here is to go in and uh, go to my sizing. And here in my sizing, I'm just gonna make sure that my width is set to 100% and maximum width to 100%. Next, I'm gonna set my padding and uh, over here on spacing, our padding needs to be set to zero, both for the top and the bottom. Now this ensures that my content here in the content area will cover pretty much the whole space. Okay, so now that I've set all this, this should be good to go. And there's a few things that I may want to do here, and that is to just test this and see if I have all my content. And it looks like I have all my content. So I'm gonna save this, and then I'm gonna save the page, close this, and then, uh, now, this is set to my home page. And by the way, if you want to change this to a different page, like let's say, for example, you may want this on the shop page, you can just come over here and choose the shop page. And let's remove it from that. So like I said, you can set this on pretty much any page you want on your website. So I'm going to save this. Then I am going to now go and take a look. So now let's take a look at our home page and see how this works. So as I scroll here, you can see this text which says follow. And it follows me pretty much as I'm scrolling throughout the whole page. And then when I mouse over here, you can see it shows up my social follow icons. So go ahead and try it out. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.